Well, hello. I see that you've found us. Right. And where are we? We're at the Holyoke Merry-Go-Round, and my name is Dennis. And my name is Ed, and why would we be here, and uh, what are we doing? What is, uh, what is our purpose in life? We are introducing our show, and uh, we would like to tell you about it. Right. Okay, so uh, tell us something about it. That's a good idea. So uh, the show is uh, about uh, people, and we talk to artists and other people uh, in interesting locations around Holyoke and beyond. I think because we're committed to, to spreading art through the conversations with interesting people that you should join us. So uh, it's kind of like a ride. And now. Okay, don't get on that. Thank you. So. Thank you very much. Where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Tell me where we I'm are. Take my how, how, did we get, how did we get here? Where are we? How did we get here? Sounds yeah. familiar. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the Holyoke Volleyball Hall of Fame. Right. And we're here because volleyball was invented in Holyoke by George Morgan back in 18... I, I always said, there you go. <laughs> I Thank think, you very much. I think so. And, and so we invited a guest. We did, and I'll let you introduce our guest. <laughs> okay, Cynthia Consentino, is that the way you would say it? Mm -hmm. Why don't you introduce yourself? Because oh. I don't like to think I can sum you up in any way. Oh, well, I'm a former Holyoke artist, but I'm now up in um, Shelburne Falls, and I'm an artist, sculptor, ceramic, mostly work. Um, I teach at UMass, in the, in the, I teach ceramics at UMass Amherst. Hmm. Um, what else would you like to know? Well, we really, we really wanted to talk to you because you're deeply involved in craft and you're deeply trying to get your work out all those years, so much beautiful stuff, right? But here we are with somebody who has a completely different trajectory. You wanted to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll give it a try. I've kind of thought about this over the uh, past few days. First of all, let me say, I, I didn't know you personally. I, I guess your name had come up a bit, but the funny thing is I've known your work already for oh, a while. Cool. <laughs> when I saw you a week ago or two weeks ago at, at the Tabor Gallery, you showed me that one piece, and I hadn't seen that before, but then I went on your website, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm recognizing all your stuff, and I realized, oh, oh my funny. God, I've known her work ah, all this time. Nice. And the one that stood out was the one that's at David Schur's, uh, uh, canal, uh, at his space where he has... Oh, the girl with a gun. The girl with a yeah. gun, the silver yeah. piece, which is extremely powerful. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so that was kind of interesting. So back to the, the, this concept that I had, um, which is... I mean, we're here for a reason. First of all, you know, Volleyball Hall of Fame is a big deal, I think. Volleyball is a very popular sport. I believe it's the most popular sport in the world, along with badminton, wow. possibly, wow. as far as participation by, by, by the public, as opposed to professional sports. Mm. Um, so loosely, the idea is the correlation between an art, um, an art, an, art uh, an artist, I'm sorry, mm. and the arts and, and uh, sports, whether it's professional or amateur sports, both of them, you know, artists and, and uh, professional sports are looking for an audience. And, you know, generally, I think most artists would like to show their work. And, and so I, I'm, I'm trying to make a correlation. You know, pro professional and amateur sports seem to have no, no hard time at all gaining uh, an audience. In fact, people will pay a lot of money to go see, you know, their favorite team. So I don't know if you have any thoughts as an artist uh, on exhibiting your work, showing your work, whether it's online or in galleries. You know, how big a challenge, if, if at all, is it for you or any artist in your mind you know, to, to really get people to come in, not only appreciate your work, hopefully buy it? Ah, but make a correlation to the sports? Well, I mean, that's mm. what I'm, I'm doing. You don't exactly have to do that, yeah, but you, can, yeah, you yeah. can concentrate really on you as an artist and how you've, you know, in, in your <laughs> years, how you've gone about getting your work out there and, and you know, and, and, you know yeah. to be seen by, by the audience and audience. I mean, so I think, you know, if you can get it into a museum, a yeah. you know, top-notch museum, you're going to get lots of people that yes. are a top-notch gallery. So I think there is a strong correlation, like, you know, the, the best is seen by lots of people, yeah. right? And as, as museums are very popular now, you go to a museum in New York, it's so crowded. It's like, it exactly. wasn't like that, like 30, 
more years ago when yeah. I was a yeah. student. It's true. It's true. So, um, so I, so I struggle finding new venues. A lot of the galleries I used to show in have closed down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they they That's struggle true. as well, right? That's right. Um, so, uh, you know, and then there's the there's different ways of doing it, right? There's community level different. Yeah. You know, so it's easier to show in your own community. I feel like I could show at AP. Right again yeah. in Northampton and stuff mm -hmm. and uh, maybe at UMass I've shown at UMass and so, so I think you can but it's harder to get into those bigger venues mm -hmm. especially in New York world I don't I don't know what the magic bullet is yeah. <laughs> the magic well, way let me know if you, when you find out well. <laughs> yeah 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 so so I guess um, so there's so much to talk about it's like, well this is a start I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. my partner Ed uh, I occasionally have a question <laughs> No, I, I'm, for me, your work is exquisite, and it shows wow, craft. <laughs> no, it shows craft and imagination, mm -hmm. which you would think everybody would want to come see. You know, volleyball, volleyball, volleyball has its own way of being exciting and participatory, but you offer your work for other people to see and understand it. And it, it seems to me that your, your work shows that commitment over the years to do that. And it underlying it, it, it but not it. just to be seen, but your work. Mm -hmm. So you've consistently stayed with it. What what stays with you to keep doing that kind of big work? You know what allows you. What, what and you're, what you're, makes you're, you're, you you're, you're, you really kept at it, and and people can keep at <laughs> volleyball, getting which is good. Getting, <laughs> really, people can go in yeah. volleyball and get ready and, and work and rehearse. But you yeah. also have to have that commitment. And yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, about yeah. That. I mean, I th I think about it a lot for my students too. Like you have to find a thread that sustains you, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's story and it's trying to understand my world, right? I think that's true about every art. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not the story part, like a narrative. Some artists aren't dealing with a narrative, but mm -hmm. I always seem to go towards story, like it was children's story, fairy tale, it was uh, mythologies, you know, early on. And now it's sort of like, what is, what's going on in our culture? What is right. forming me? So um, I try to understand the world. So that world and the craziness of the world right now mm. is actually kind of overwhelming. Mm. I'm having a hard time right now actually right. trying to settle down with my work. Right. But so that sustains me, like co content sustains me, story sustains me. So do you um, expect and people... And understanding myself and right. where I live, what, what what's happening, what forms me I think is the biggest thing, like what's making me who I am. In a quest to like be able to shuck it <laughs> or, get, get it or get to a better place, right? Well, yeah. what I started to interrupt to say, but you know, you, you're saying narrative. Now, narrative for a long time and personal that, was not considered to be the most important part of it, but when you have narrative, you do hope to be understood a little bit. I definitely, for me, the most important thing is that somebody can make some sort of connection with That's my work. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I feel like I'm talking, like I'm talking to myself all hmm. the time, right? So. <laughs> I think Which I should, do. <laughs> yeah. well, I think we should have her have a piece that you could pull up right now. Because, uh, you know, yeah, like in yeah. a well, way, we will definitely do we that. We can we do should, that. Yeah. We can show it in the show. But, you know, for mm -hmm. example, do you have an example of, a, of, a, of what you went through a couple of times that you feel was part of a story that you. And I'm going to ask a follow up piece? on the connection with your audience. Mm. Oh, boy. You guys are tough. Um, so, I mean, certainly I did a long series with Girls With Guns and I did a long series with Girls With Flowers and flowers came out in different mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. Flowers appeared like on the side, but also as like mutated parts of a girl, like her hand would be a flower. Mm. So, so the question is, what, what is an example of what like is the like story? Like the gun. How did the gun come up? In oh, your... the gun. Okay, so the gun, we're talking 1998, way before all these um, shootings at right. schools, right? right? I don't remember when the first one was. Probably but, around that time. Yeah, but it was definitely not on the, my agenda. No. Because <laughs> yeah. for me, the girl with gun was actually a response to Henry Darger, who's a, a oh. you know, Henry yes. Darger's work, sure. like a, Outsider, I yes. don't know if you even I, I call it Darger, but you might oh, be right. right. It could be Darger, but yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not sure now. Huh. But I saw a beautiful exhibit at the American Folk Museum in New York. I saw that too. I saw Wasn't that the three girls. Girls. Oh, fantastic? And yeah. I stood in front of yeah. the images of the girls with rifles yes. and the girls with penises, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. more the rifles. Yeah. And I was like, why? I was so like enthralled, but also like, oh, 
like what's going on and I yeah. think I was like like whenever for me I what holds me or keeps me going is when there's something that's powerful or potent or nagging at me or I, and I usually don't totally understand the full implications mm -hmm. of it right but there's something powerful there and why is it affecting me so and then I'm digging at it I'm trying mm -hmm. it this way I'm trying that way the girl you know so um, different poses. The first ones I did, was, I think, were metal ones at Kohler. I was at an artist residency, and I wanted to like create girl. It was a criticism of gun culture, but it also was a fantasy of empowering a child, mm -hmm. and also a questioning of why would a girl need a gun, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it, you know, maybe now it's different, but then a boy with a gun wasn't as questionable. But seeing a girl with a gun was mm -hmm. like, oh my god because usually girls are portrayed, yeah. and, and right. women, right. not anymore. There's been such a, oh, as more uh, sweet, passive, you know, a girl with a basket of flowers yeah. is what I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Hoskins, she wasn't beating up. Yeah. Um, um, so she was um, kind of a, a nightmare, but also a desire that a girl can have right. the self-presence to protect mm. herself, well, right? I but mean, not, we don't want her to have a gun. Yeah. It's a symbolic I wanna, thing. I wanna just, if you sure. indulge me a minute, I want to say that there was a time in New York where it was very dangerous on the streets. Absolutely, right? yes. And I was really, I was, there. <laughs> I was in, oh yeah? yeah? And I was enamored with this young woman that I went to see, and she said, I hope you don't mind, but I'm now taking shooting lessons, <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah, guns. Yeah. And I, to, you almost can get emotional now. I almost broke down and started to cry. I said, why are we in a country where right. the women have to arm themselves yeah. when we really want the or feminine anyone. beauty? Yeah. And so you've yeah. delved into that question, and I, I respect that, mm. that attempt because yeah. it is mm. a little shocking to think that, that we have to arm ourselves, and there isn't any answer, as we know. Mm. So many guns out there, where, yeah. where, where are we going with right. that? So anyhow. It that's, is a that's, real that's, disconnect yeah. in our culture, yeah. right? Very that deep, very deep. We have all these crazy guns, guns, guns. I just walked, walked yeah. into an Army Navy store in Salem, New Hampshire. I was waiting for my takeout food, and <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this isn't the Army Navy store that I grew up in, yeah. Northampton, you know? Oh, yeah. It had so many like machine looking guns yeah, 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 <laughs> on the wall. I was like, oh, I'm out of here. And people were buying them, you know, and it's just like. You were expecting like surplus uh, army they fatigues. They had all that too. Yeah, 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 not really. They possibly had, like, pocket new knives or, or hunting so what, knives. What about the response to your, the, your sculpture with that? Yeah, people? and I, that's what I want to oh, touch on. To the, to the gun stuff? Yeah, if I may. Um, so clearly, you, there's something very strong that you feel and that you want to have your art speak and you know but at the same time were you thinking possibly that there was a bit of a um we've used this term before like a wow factor like you you're thinking okay if i have a, a what clearly is a, a a girl holding a gun and the reason i ask that is again going back to the connection of you know mm -hmm. saying okay i i have something to say how can i grab people by the throat almost literally visually and say look look at this here and you know yeah. Similar to in, in professional sports, a lot of, you know, what's televised is really very in your face. It's, it's all about, let's make sure these audience people who are watching whatever professional sports is happening now don't leave. You know, we got to keep them engaged. So is there, mm. that's a long question, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, you know, because I, I listened to some of your other yeah. um, ones uh, talking about craft. It's like, I like things that are raw yeah. and, um, and emotional and yeah. real. Like, yeah. so, it, so I often, a lot of my work puts like contradictory things or it subverts a bit in the past anyways. Now I'm doing these love faces, <laughs> these kissy faces. Yeah. What's, where's that from? But anyways, um, so a lot of that work was, it, yeah, there was a certain amount of wanting to be in your face, yeah. but not, and I thought a lot about it. Is it, you know, mm -hmm. I believe artists should be socially responsible. Because I've seen work that I feel like, oh, you know, that's like opportunist. Like, yes, exactly. You can go over the, yeah. over the board, you know, overboard. And that's not where the girls with guns came from. Really, it was like, it was more about my stuff and trying to understand yeah, first, me. First stuff, um, yeah. And yeah, so, and some of them were like the second body. Of, mm -hmm. Originally, they were like cast iron and I was gonna do 32 and they were gonna be like a squadron, so a commentary right. sort of on the really. toy soldiers that I grew yeah. up with, the, yeah. the old metal ones and yeah. the plastic ones, yeah. you know, it was like my brother had those, yeah. right? And so I was gonna make my version, like, hmm. so. In ceramics? 
Oh, the first ones were cast iron. It sounded and then, like you said iron, and I said, wow, because yeah. cast iron is a huge process. Well, yeah. I was at Kohler. Luckily, I got that yeah. artist residency where all of, it was just there for you. Amazing different. place. Yeah. A mm. bit brutal, <laughs> physically yeah. brutal no. environment, but um, right. cast physical. Iron. I did one yeah. cast iron piece in my life, and it was a huge deal. You have to go to Kohler. We no, can talk well, about I, that. In those days, it was, I was down in New Jersey. Yeah. But, but basically, did what I you're saying the question? is... I did yeah, answer sure. that. I can't remember. You, you, you <laughs> spoke for a, several minutes, and um, I don't mean to denigrate that. <laughs> but, 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 no, you're doing fantastic. But, yeah, yeah, a little bit I'm, in your what what is it's coming, I, it's coming from inside yes, exactly. as, as a puzzle. That's, yes. where we, that's for you to express yeah. the best you can. Your what, own of, feelings, about, right? And yeah. so I think that's the difference. Like if you're, if you're just being like, I think it is opportunity. If you're just trying to make stuff that will right. have shock value, yeah. it has to have. For me, it has to be real. Of like course. it's really a, it's really real. It's yeah. really about my stuff and about the culture, right? Mm. Mm. It's very yeah. upsetting. It is upsetting. No, <laughs> right? It How is upsetting. the guns really freak me out. Yeah. You know, like I think, what is wrong with us? Like, why do we have mm. to have more guns in the United States than humans? And Obviously, it's a problem with all these killings. Problem, yeah. And I'm a teacher. We had an incident at UMass, but it was actually more of a suicide kind of thing. But I could see the cops in the gut. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that's right out my window here. Yeah. This is real. This yeah. happens. Exactly. Those poor high school and grammar school students. I mean, yeah. what's exactly. wrong that we can't nip it? Do, hmm. do, so I won't do, make do any think... girls with guns anymore because our no. culture has changed so much about it that I feel like there's better ways of... Oh, that's interesting. And okay. I've worked through yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, those pieces are 20-something. Sure, yeah. Well, I did do another version in 2000, 2000? I can't okay. remember, but right. they're still almost 20 years old wow. or more. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 to me, you know, also argues the obligation of the artist to be within the society. So you're not reflecting on your own fantasies. You're really talking about where you live and what's going on with you. So well, now maybe you're... a little bit of our, well, because our fantasies are a result of um, where we live, right? That's true it's too. A reaction to or a, you know trying right. to fix or. But you're coming out of a period of time where art could be completely abstract. You right, know, like, right. That's I was what trained. I'm well, well, you avoided I was, that. I was oppressed when I was in uh, as an undergraduate. Because I was narrative and psychological. You explain that a little bit more, really. Well, I went, UMass wasn't so much so. But when I went to Cooper Union, I, I, did oh, my, did. I finished my undergraduate at Cooper Union, mm. and there, it was very anti narrative mm -hmm. at that point. The teachers right. I had, uh -huh. right? Um, so that's interesting, because there were some that weren't, but yeah, mm. yeah, it was like, what? It, like, they didn't really want to see like a story that was considered a bad thing. That's right, that's right. right? Yeah. Kids were told that. They're never going to get yeah. into college with any kind of art respectability if you don't do abstract. Yeah. I had that. So how did that affect you? Because you didn't go that way. Well, it, literally, it wasn't super extreme with the abstract. It just was anti-narrative, and it was more conceptual already, which is right. interesting, because that was because I had Hans Hacke, um, and I'm trying to think of some of the other people. But, and so how did it affect me? Um, I mean, I can't help to, but do what you do. But I, oh, I did, I did do some abstract works, and I do like some of those works. Um, yeah. So you try different things. You're young. You're willing to try different things. But now you just can't help it. Like, <laughs> actually, I recently tried to do some more. I do do some abstract works. Yeah. What, what's kind of more of a problem right now is like I feel a pressure that people know a certain kind of work and, yeah. and uh, I want to do this and that. And I, I feel like I want to try all these different things, but it's like then it's harder to show it. And yeah. Right. Right. Um, so do you difficulties. have a show coming up? Uh, do I just like a piece here and a piece there? I don't have any like one person shows coming up. I need to hustle and find a gallery, which is a hard thing to do when you're as old as me. <laughs> so when do you, where do you go to collide? Where was that you collide with Dennis? You went, you were, did you bring a piece over to? Oh yeah, so um, Amy, because uh, 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 I taught at um, Holyoke Community College for 20 years as an adjunct. Okay. Um, Amy asked me and a lot of area yeah. artists this is Amy that are Holyoke relationship yeah. or Amy Jonquist relationship. And isn't the um, opening coming this on yeah. Monday? Monday, it, it's on Monday. Oh, is it Monday? I believe it is. I've got to check my email. We'll, we'll, we'll check. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this will be out 
It would be a fun artists. exhibit because I, I think yeah. over 30 artists. Right? 40, she said 40. 40 artists. Yeah. So what so did you bring? Over 100 pieces. And so last year I started um, <clears throat> these vases that are he that sit, so they separate out into be two heads. So they're basically images of a couple, right? Hmm. And so they could be vases, but then they could sit together and they're oh, kissing. And there'll be some that are biting. And then I'm going to incorporate animals. But right now I have a series of three that's not up on my website. Okay. But you can find them on Instagram, okay. <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah. So it's this idea that they fit together and that they support each other, kind of. Mm. No, but is it love, like the complexities mm. of love? Right. Mm. <laughs> so no weapons for now? No weapons for now, no. <laughs> I've been think, working on nature pieces, too. Like mm. I, I, I did have a one-person show mm. in um, Millersville University in Pennsylvania yeah. this past um, Fall. Oh, a few months ago. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, and uh, I did work about nature there. Mm. So did, did our relationship with nature. So it was animals. And I'm the great interrupter. Excuse me. That's, That's right. what I'm thinking. Do you have a hard time explaining the importance of what your work is to your students? And how do you say to them, do they need to explore or what are they doing in the world? Because you really represent my work, I try toward not to them, talk to toward them. What, what, they, don't you have to say what is important for them, why they're there? Do I have that? Yeah, I think it's hard because you they have to do so many things at once, you know, so they have to learn like the basics of clay and they have to start thinking of content or what, what are your goals and they have to be learning like technical terms. And so and then like, you know, but they've taken other art classes, so it's not all on you. But yeah, it's hard to say like, what are your, what are your goals here? Like, what are you trying? Right. And but so I asked them to write about their pieces do you, do you, and so what have is a plan. like what did, what did one student do or write that you remember that for importance or or they they they're they, pretty profound i'm yeah. pretty, i'm impressed with yeah. the students like a lot of them are dealing with personal stuff like we have students talking about anorexia and bulimia and hmm. um, abuse this semester and they're really forthcoming which i think is hmm. you know fairly right. new yeah, yeah. maybe 15 years I'm yeah. like, wow, I don't know if I would have shared all that. Um, and the work is, is communicates some of these it, ideas, yeah. And a lot of them care about the environment. There's a lot of students who take ceramics courses that are like other majors. Like we have a lot of science majors um, and a lot of natural resources or mm -hmm. um, environmental. So, um, do, sorry, focus. did you say that some of those students take art classes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, oh, that's, that's the beauty of going to a school yeah. like UMass. Yeah. Like you could. You know, a lot of them minor in art, yeah. and, but they're very good artists. I'm like, wow, okay, that you're better an art student. <laughs> so I, I was curious, do, do you know more or less how, what percentage of students who, who take art, you know, go oh. on to become professional artists or, or pursue art seriously? Or do you have any uh, sense of that? I'm just curious. From my students, yeah. you know, you know, I'm thinking of the, my cohorts. When I yeah. was in school, a lot of them dropped out, and I think you probably mm. have experience the same thing. It's mm. really hard to be an artist. It is. So, so and a, a lot of them find things that are somewhat creative, but not like being a professional mm. artist. So, mm -hmm. no, I, I don't. But our grad students do pretty well, because at that yeah. point, the undergrads, I don't know what the percentages are. Yeah. Okay. But we've had some very successful yeah. students. The grad students do seem to continue, for the most part, either teaching yeah. and making their art or this somewhat uh, goes back That's to... That's good... I'd like to know that statistic. <laughs> it would be interesting because, I mean, you don't want to necessarily warn them that pursuing art is, is a tough uh, choice, right. but, but sometimes you kind of, as, I guess as an instructor, as a, you, you want them to be aware of that, that it's not guaranteed. I mean, it's not guaranteed that if you study electrical engineering, you can be a good electrical engineer, but... Or even get a job. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, if I may, in, in the beginning, you, we talked about, you know, current galleries and museums and how there's actually, you know, a, a resurgence or people are lining up, they're paying money to go in to see. Mm. So, there's this interesting dynamic, and the one thing I wanted to touch on is, and it's not sort of new, I think they've been doing this for a long time, but art, again, or art as a, I don't want to say spectacle, but art as a, a show, you know, think of... Well, currently at Mass Mocha, there's an artist, and I don't have his name at the tip of my tongue. I should have had it before we started. But he, he built a small roller coaster. Do you know Yeah, his? yeah, yeah. I should know his name. <laughs> so, so this is, of course, it's a... Entertainment. Art is, is yes. entertainment. Yes. I mean, it's a, it's a 
I guess pun intended, it's a vehicle for what he really wants to talk about as an artist. But here he is, he built a little roller coaster which the people can actually get in and ride. Um, a couple years ago at the Shed in, in New York City, I was in a show, and again, I don't have the artist's name, uh, where we, you know, we paid a, a high price to go in and, and, and lay down on a, ca on a metal yeah. net. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I may have I actually mentioned this to you before. And, you know, and this was the kind of thing where be before the show started, they asked us to empty our pockets. If we, uh, if we have any kind of heart condition, maybe we should consider not doing it. And I thought all the time, this feels like a Disney ride or something. And, and there's that whole sort of, right. I'm wondering if museums and galleries, especially museums, are, are in their meetings saying, what can we do to get uh, more people to come in and also pay money and stand in line, you know, for yeah. the... So, I'm sure that's on their agenda. But, but the artists are doing it, so it's not just that. Do no, it, I mean? no, I know. And I mean, I, is it... allow it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that... I'm okay with it. So it's valid. It's a valid... <laughs> well, I like that art can keep on expanding yeah. into things that you don't think is art, right? No, and exactly. So Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, the, and I like that you can experience it physically, yeah. though I didn't go on the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go read more about that piece, yeah. too. But um, yeah, sometimes I'm like, well, what does this mean? Is there meaning behind it? Yeah. Like, what's, yeah, so how deep can we go here? Because um, the cost of things like that are yeah. outrageous. Are really right? high. So sometimes I like, oh, is it really? I always wonder, like, how does that artist have the the um papa and the belief in something that spend like a million, half yeah. a million dollars, like yeah. Christo, you know, like yeah, millions exactly. of years to yeah. get a project? I would never have that kind of. You have to have a big ego, right? yeah. but that's okay. Good, bravo for the people who have yeah. the faith in something. I agree. And, I, I'm okay with it. You yeah. know. But so, York. what was the question though? Was like it was a discussion more? You know, it was just bringing up again because yeah. you we were talking briefly about your, your students. Are they? What are they? If they are pursuing an art career, mm. are they going to go and just? you know, have shows and then try to get as many people to come in, or are they possibly going to go directly towards, I'm going to, you know, pay, treat art as a, I don't know, as a, as a, I mean, I am at a loss of, for words here, but art as a, I keep saying spectacle, but, you know. Okay. I got a word. Okay, you're, I got, no, I got, no, I got a Rescue word. Me. No, I got a word for you. Okay. Well, in my group of people that I know, we discussed this stuff, <clears throat> and we came up with the word theater. Okay. Theater like that is what the spectacle. They, the spectacle is, yeah. but if it doesn't have enough art content, it's a one-time event. Yeah. Right. One line but if you kinda, come right? back, which is, you know, your art, I think, offers people come for another look, try to understand it. Whereas if the bombs go off and the fireworks, it's done. Right. In that right, way, right, right. I think theater is a test. Mm -hmm. It's not the answer, but it's a test. So, you wouldn't go back and ride the roller coaster again. But you would right. go back and do a real art exhibit. Yeah. To me, that's that's oh, that's that's a, that's a good yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Okay, that that's, that's, that's all I got. Cause, yeah, because I talk to my students <laughs> about one-liners. If you yeah. get it, but that's a oh. little different. If you get it in one, if you get the whole thing yeah. in one um, viewing, then you're not going to hold it. So, like an artist's job, this is what I give them. Right. Artist's job is to hold the viewer I and make them is. spend time with the piece okay. and, and think, think about the piece. Yes. Yeah. But that's like one way of looking at. I'm sure. Um, there might be another, you know, more expensive, expensive way. Oh, this, is no, this is no time to be. Have. This is no time to be generous. Let's get. A, <laughs> let's yeah, get. Right, let's get brutal. after the infidels. Let's get brutal. Let's, let's get really <laughs> awful to yeah. people who, in a sense, want to exploit the audience. And I, you mm -hmm. know, I have a big argument about that. You know, they, are you, they're, they're really not. They're are really, you talking about obs, obs, obscure? Um, no, I'm just talking about if you put a dog up in front of a museum and put flowers on it. Okay. You know, it's it's something, but it's not really to me the yeah. same thing we're trying to do. Well, but so, but um, yeah, maybe not. But it does expand the um, Jeff Koons, right? So it does expand what art is and what art can be, and mm -hmm. it and it creates dialogue, which I think is good. But I know? think you can talk about it now as saying he's theatrical, he gets people there, but there's not a whole lot of substance past that to me. That's where I look at Combs. Like even the, the, the chrome, the chromes yeah. and all that stuff. It's just different. I mean, actually, I have those are the almost beautiful, they're just like beautiful forms at once you kind of, yeah. right? So they are beautiful, right? Yeah. All right, but so he's transcended <laughs> right. almost. Which is, what it was. Which yeah. is one of my pieces has Kuhn's dogs, balloon dogs, oh, yeah. in the piece yeah. because I said... Oh, you painted it in? No, oh, no, no, wait, as a, as a, as a sculpture because it it's an artist with, a, uh, with one of his balloon, balloon dogs over his shoulder. 
the way they used to carry sheep to market, you know, like the artists. Oh, this is the relief. You show I did a relief. It's a relief. Yeah, it's actually so what really I'm saying is yeah. the burden of yeah. theater is held yeah. also by the artist, which is, can you be theatrical right. enough mm. to survive in the market or place out there? Mm. And that's, that's, that's an obligation I don't think we can ask artists to take seriously. Mm. I uh, think the uh, Barnum and Bailey thing is, is mm. different. Mm. Well, right, and I don't think all artists have to do that. I, I, I am a little generous, there's, there's a place for that, but uh, <laughs> I, you know, there's a place for the small, intimate object. And because and I'm teaching ceramics, and mm. a lot of ceramics is functional. Yeah, work sure. right and so uh you know there's different goals i'm i'm all for there's a lot of room for different kinds of art and we're lucky to live in a, in well, a time why did where that's we invite allowed. her she's so nice why did we invite her our show she's is not, not supposed she's to not be that nice or is it what what do you need no her to do? i don't know i don't know but the point i'm saying is okay i agree with you but i have another definition that helps me the pieces that I do, I want people, and I think your heart, heart that want them to live with it. Mm. In other words, I want them right. to bring yes. it into their lives and be there. Uh, and I think uh, that's yeah, a that, second that. definition for me. Mm. Yeah. This, and so, I feel that good about your work. I would mm. want to, you know, have yeah. it in my house, you know, different. You know, because I'm trying, you know, being so old, right, and having <laughs> making, making art for so long, I try to remember what the original love was. Like, you know, like, Please. go back to yeah. the beginning. Right. And I was remember, you know, I was thinking about how I used to love the Museum of Native American when it was on 150th. Sure, Did you ever I've get to there. go? Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. And, and that's why I'm a ceramic artist. That, oh, really? and that An yeah. Ankara Anthropology Museum in Turkey, I went immediately after uh, un undergrad. Yeah. I went to Turkey for like five weeks and seeing the ceramic work from Beautiful Anatolia, yeah. Um, yeah. these gorgeous vases, polished, like they were like swan, like bird-like right. vessels. Mm. And Cycladic art, say, or, or some of the African art. Like you go, or, yeah. or sit, I remember going to the Smithsonian. This is all when I was in undergrad, right? Yeah. And seeing like this beaded little hat that uh, it was some, I can't remember, it was like Middle America, Native American. Mm piece and the power in these pieces, the bomba, bomba, like some of these pieces, they're not, it's, it, it's good. Some of them aren't particularly great craft, right? Some of them are amazing craft, because I know you're, you're, this is a big issue for you. Yes, I think sure. it's the intent, right? Yeah. The intent and the passion that the artist, the right. intention that artist puts in can literally imbue, and I, this is where I get a little new agey, mm -hmm. I think these pieces are radiating some intention and like power beyond right. just what we're looking at visually. Hmm. I like that. You know, like, and yeah. so like Tibetan um, monks, when they make the mandalas, they're like asking the god or the goddess. Yeah, the, yeah they are. Uh, enlightened yeah. people, what, those Buddha people, right. these Buddha, yeah. whatever those guys are called, yeah. into that sand painting and then they yeah. let it be free, right? They destroy it so yeah. that. That's true. So that, and so African art does that as well. They, oh, some of it. They do not. it for the festivals, and yeah. then they don't. They do a new one for the new festival. They but they're your, literally yeah. inviting yeah. like ancestors to in, in mm. live. Right. And so I think, not that I'm doing that, but I think one's intent. I think what we're responding to a lot of times with powerful works are the intention that Let's somehow so. is captured. That's right. And maybe one could say it's just the ingredients, how they're assembled, right? Well, when you bring up the African art, you know that some of those sculptures are a whole hundreds of nails in a head. Oh, yeah. yeah, those and that, But pieces. in a way, is a different kind of craft, but it's also with a certain intention. Intention, And it's clear. Yeah. So I think, I did I just agree with her? Just a minute ago, I said she was too nice. Well, yeah. So I was going to, let's see, like... I'm agreeing. Because well, it's a kind of a crude craft right. on some of the African yeah. pieces. Some are very, like, exquisite, but yeah. some of them are like, I I'm, I'm think it's Bambara, like they take mud and blood oh, yeah. and bones and they and they make like this um mm -hmm. it looks like a calf or a <laughs> rhino maybe yeah. and it's very crude it is so powerful yeah, i so, remember so a professor like saying that. if you're going like to use blood and bones <laughs> and better be good and uh, shit and spit it's gonna be powerful <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's like the intention of i mean is it because we know because when you look at it you don't really know maybe yeah. you think it's mud but you don't yeah. know it's blood and bones right. And, right. and so is it the intention or is it the actual materials yeah i think it's the intention yeah, i mean some yeah. even though it comes across yeah um so i i, I could only aspire to put some of the 
a power. Of that, of that. I, I don't know how to do that because no. I, I didn't come from a culture. No, right? But it's different. But we appreciate it, and yeah, you but, see it, and you I, understand it. Like yeah. I want my pieces to have a certain. I think intensity. integrity. I think integrity with the intention and truth is is all weaved in. It's, it's part of it. It's right? part of it, and it shows. Honesty, and it shows. Right? Yeah, oh, and it shows. And it shows in your work, frankly. That, otherwise, we wouldn't have invited you. I'm sorry. Well, but some of you know, some of my work isn't good. It's like, and that's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> the work is sad, that's, or it's sad good, that it's not good. That's a good actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's like, terrible. Some of it's not good. Yeah. So, uh, so I just w watched this beautiful documentary, Hokusai. It's a Japanese film. It's oh, about yeah. him and his daughter. What's it called? Hokusai. Okay. I forget yeah. what it's actually yeah. called, but yeah. it's the filming is gorgeous. Like the landscape, it mm -hmm. really feels like you're in. 1800s yeah. Japan, wow. yeah. um, but I, um, one of some of the beautiful parts of that movie, like he and they, he was quoted, and they got it in the movie that on his death that I would be better in like five if I had five more years I could get there. He was always trying to be better yeah. and get yeah. be good, yeah. Yeah. and he never thought. I don't know. Right. If, I mean, I think he must have known he was damn good because he. Right. But he wanted to. He and I feel that way. Like I, I'll never. I never think I'll ever get as good as I would like to be, right? right? And I'm always in quest of getting to that powerful, like capturing something more. Yeah. I think most artists, why we're artists, mm -hmm. is that we're looking to go beyond our, sure. uh, get, be better. Like, but you should yeah. know your history and know your craft yeah. enough to know what you're doing in relation yeah. to a little bit. I right. am, right, yeah. and, and, I, and I feel sad. You do, you know, I think. Here's where I'll follow you. A lot of academic programs have, like, and we're about to do this, well, uh, um, a lot of academic programs are more broad now, like, they don't, and I think a lot of it is funding, right, they can't, uh, and it's also a philosophy, though, where yeah. you get a general education and right. you really don't go deep into, like, one, it's hard to get enough into one, like, ceramics, it's we're very limited. limited in what we can offer them in well, I'm going to give you, maybe we can come to the end of this yes, in a way. Uh, Look at it this way. Ming vases are something in everybody's vocabulary. Mm. W but when they st said they, in a sense, did them, and they, you don't have to do them again, to me, the history of craft can be that each time through the generations, you do have to make them. And your story is invested yeah. on the fact that it's never going to be the same, but it deserves to be compared in terms of. So in a way, mm -hmm. you're taking elements of the culture that way with you, like the guns or whatever, and saying, okay, I can be compared with what, you know. You know, they say the statue of David was originally in order to, f to frighten the rulers by saying, you know, we're, we're powerful down here. It wasn't just a nice guy. So in a way, you're saying, I'm aware of the fact that we have guns. I wow. understand it. You know, there's, a, there's. Oh, now you've looped back to the guns. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Oh, well, I'm still on the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm well, just I, saying, it, yeah. you know, it, it shows through it. It just shows through it. And I, and mm -hmm. I think in each generation, yeah. the more you know and the more you express that, the better we understand ourselves. Yeah. So. Well, pretty good. For the, no, so, not bad. Damn. For the crafts of, I think wow. it gives you the facility Thank and the you. confidence. <laughs> and, and it's sad that our culture doesn't let people reproduce like other cultures, they like should. even France. Like oh, you yeah. go to the Louvre and you paint. Yeah. They still do that, I think. No, right? they do. We can't we, do we, that. Yeah. We have our academics. Like most university education, you yeah. that would not. I mean, a little bit. There's a little bit of copying, but not to the level of old. They like used the to, uh, too, uh, yeah. like my, the my sculptural friend, Martin Chirino, who's very famous, started out in the academy in Spain and in the museum in the Prado, they had to copy with fidelity mm. the paintings yeah. that there, yeah. and he got so good at it that they started selling his stuff out of that, meaning here's Martin's work, and that to me is a good example. Mm. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to do it that well? And then of course he started doing sculpture and said, I'll be my own original guy. Mm. But you know, this is the test that I think we would love to see people try to do and, 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 and work through our history. I, see, I always see like, um, there's good and bad, for, there's pros and cons, and you gain certain things by going that way, and you do gain certain things right. by the contemporary way of education. And whatever but, that um, is. <laughs> <laughs> she's good, she's really good. 
Thank you for coming. Why don't we just say that? Thank you for coming oh, and saying all that stuff. We haven't touched on certain topics. Oh, I know. Well, we'll have, I we can always have a part two. Like. We, we went all the way through everything. You I'm were sure. summing up and I went right back in. I'm yeah. so sorry. No, that's what, what it's Summing up really. again. Yeah, no, we but really did great. Yeah. And I thank feel you like you're, you're not holding out on us or any way. Yeah. That's a nice thing. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Well, thanks for inviting me. This is fun. I'll be a fan now of your series. It was so nice to learn about some of those artists. Thanks. Right. that I didn't know about. You can look at that. So. Mm -hmm. George, you're the executive director, right, of yes. this museum, and we've been here and enjoying being your guest, but maybe people need to know a little bit more about the museum. Do you have a little something you could say for us? And Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, hey, we were really happy to have you guys here today. Uh, anytime we have an opportunity to show off the museum, uh, we want to make sure that we do that. But we're really fortunate that this place in Holyoke, Massachusetts is the one Hall of Fame for the entire world of volleyball. Mm -hmm. So these are the people that you see in the Olympics in indoor volleyball, beach volleyball, and they're represented here. We have 162 inductees from 25 different countries, and it's really impressive that we're able to do this not only on American soil, but in Western Mass, and have this shrine to this great international sport. Right, right. Somebody said, I heard that it's the, there are more participants in this sport than most sports. What, is this true? Yeah, we are, we are nearing one billion participants per year. Does this include the nets in the back of the houses? Everything, everything. everything. absolutely everything. And this is, again, most people know this as their 4th of July picnic type game. Right. And certainly we know that there's professional levels, there's the Olympic level, um, and that, that takes all that into account. So do you have events here regularly? We do. We have events here at the museum. We also have events throughout Holyoke. Um, we do the Battle of the Badges is one of our most well-known that takes first responders from the FDNY and then up here with Holyoke Police and Fire right. and Springfield and puts everyone together in a friendly competition, I and would say. And you, in, you introduce new people into your museum, too. Certainly, yeah. Our yeah. biggest event is our enshrinement every year. Right. We have a mayor's reception here. It's a VIP event. Um, where we're able to really let the inductees see the museum for the first time. They physically get to place their plaques in their display right. cases, and that stays here throughout the entire year until the next class comes in. And then we have a nice gala dinner where we fully, officially enshrine them. Mm -hmm.